Athletic. Joining us now is a man who has hung up his football cleats, a man who is inspirational, already has won an Emmy because his story and his work ethic and his grit and perseverance is something that every little kid should look up to and say, I want to be like that motherfucker. Ladies and gentlemen, Shaquem Griffin. Yeah! <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me today. Thank hey, you. congrats on retirement. I know it's not easy, so congratulations. And uh, what would you, when you look back on your NFL career, what are your thoughts as a whole? Did you enjoy your time in the biggest league on earth, Shaquille? Yeah, I mean, I feel like for me, is I, I enjoyed it a lot. I feel like for the most part, is the learning experience that the NFL brings to you. And, you know, you know, for me, it's, it's, it was an advantage because I was there with my twin brother. You know, when you talk about doing everything and everything comes half off or 50 percent off, it's, uh, it matter if it's clothes, shoes, getting food or having a home and like everything 50 percent off. So that is a clear advantage. But I feel like the, the, the most thing that I took away from it was the people around the brotherhood that we had and being around guys like KJ Wright, Bobby Radner, Russ, and being able to learn different things about life outside of football. I felt like what well, put me at peace about a lot of things that I'm doing as far as the career I want to, I want to uh, partake in or being able to motivate or be able to, to be that influence that I am and being able to give back and help. It's awesome. When, uh, when Seattle drafted you, I felt like it was the perfect spot for you with Pete Carroll and their high energy coaching staff. And you always, always smiling, always running around, having fun. What was it like there, like from day one? Was Pete what you expected? Oh man, definitely. It, it, it's actually more than I expected. I mean, it's 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 crazy to say, it, but it's no other place like Seattle. And I know a lot of people does say that, and you know, some people can take it with a grain of salt. But I feel like Pete Carroll is such an amazing coach, high energy. No matter the age, that age don't play a factor when it comes to him. I just remember literally the the first week, and he came out with gloves, and he was doing one on ones and throwing the ball, catching it, and you know, running up and down the field like this man can this man go get it every single day. Like he'll make you have more energy. Like it's no way that you can come with bad energy and Pete comes with hundred percent energy every single day, ready to go, ready to attack the day and ready to just be that force to be reckoned with. And it's just like it's crazy because when you see him throw the ball, man, it, it's insane. Like I remember just being inside the indoor and he used to throw the football until the basketball goal. Pete and you literally, it literally gotta be all all of forty yards away. Like Damn. That's the things that people don't see, you know, just him warming up He's and stuff, just throwing the ball 40 yards and landing. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Pete, are we talking about Pete Carroll right now? Who does? Pete Carroll. We're talking about Air Max, Chew Gum. 707 with us, and he'll be our quarterback throwing no lookers. You thought <laughs> Mahomes or somebody. Pete Carroll been doing it. <laughs> wow! Oh, we're cleats, then we're cleats too, Damn. right? Listen, this changes this changes a lot of things the way we talk about Pete Carroll, especially for you. You need to have a little bit more respect for Pete Carroll after what I just heard. He's ninety five years old, oh. slinging the pill still, and having energy. Uh, Shaquem, were you ready to be? like an inspiration for kids? Because I feel like, obviously, uh, and I don't know what the exacts are and how it happened, but you have one hand, I believe, is the, I don't know what the scientific term, I don't want to fuck it up. Honestly, I don't want to disrespect you. It's your retirement day. Let's enjoy that. But you were thrusted into a spot of being an inspiration for a lot of people. You make it to the NFL, the highest level, the toughest job on earth. You have success. You do well. Almost like telling the world, like, hey, only you define what you're going to become. Not everybody else does. Were you ready for that moment? Did you expect it? And how have you kind of evolved in that role in that position? I feel like with time comes growth. And I feel like as I got older, you know, being able to take on like the, the fans, take on like the, the people who say I'm motivational and, and helping them out. It, it, it took time, but I feel like now that I'm older and being able, like I said, learn from guys like KJ Wright and Bobby, it, it put a lot of stuff in perspective that made it easier for me to see it and not me feeling like I'm in a gray area and not knowing how to do or what to do when it comes to motivating people. And really, it's just me living my life and showing that no matter what people say, I can go do this because I want to. So now it's trickled down to a lot of people who've been watching. So yeah, I mean, now that I get older, it's, it's a better understanding of it. It's, it's knowing what I am bringing to the table and what I can do for people. And it's like, now, how can I reach more people? How can I get them to the point where mentally we're all strong together and not just a person where it's like, okay, I get doubted and now it's over for me. Or oh, man, whatever people say, they're right. It's not about what people say. It's about what you feel about yourself and what you're able to do. Ooh, oh, yeah. Is that what you're doing next? Are we getting into motivational speaking? What You already have an Emmy. Yeah. Already have an Emmy. Already have done a lot of things. What are you doing next? I already started motivational speaking. I just recently came back from Auburn and speaking to the football team. And that's fun because I played Auburn my senior year before before I ever left. And I had like three and a half sacks. So. Hell <laughs> yeah. 
it's kind of cool when you go back and speak to the team and stuff like that. And a lot of guys I was there was like freshmen or, you know, when they got there, or redshirt freshmen and stuff like that. So it's kind of funny to see them again and, you know, talk. But, you know, for us, no matter what team you're on, no matter where you come from, no matter what your background, you know, it's a brotherhood. And, and a lot of times we're so taught to be so strong and, you know, passionate about what we do. And, like, nothing bothers us. But the, 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 the fact of the matter is that, Sometimes it's okay not to be okay, but the thing is, having the brothers to support you, because that's what we're here for, that's how you become better. That's how you become a better you, because you will let go of all that stuff that's holding you back, and you allow yourself to be better you. Golly, let's go. Huh? Yeah. Let's fucking go, Shaq. Go ahead, Connor, your question. Yeah, Shaq, is there any thought to go and maybe be a motivational speaker for your brother even? Because I believe he's still <laughs> playing, maybe hop in there and you know motivate him to be the best player he can be. Yeah, I mean, it, it's crazy because, honestly, before the football and everything, it's something that we always wanted to do growing up. And, and and that's the crazy part. So being able to still motivate my brother, I still get encouraging words from him. And I feel like when it came to football, being together every step of the way, I feel like me not being with him was like a piece of football that was changed for me. You know what I'm saying? Like I was always passionate because like I had something to fight for. You know what I'm saying? I'm proving people wrong. I'm fighting to be there right beside my brother no matter what. And that was our thing. We were a package deal. We really, we literally took a package deal that we made when we was nine years old and took it straight to the NFL. Like a lot of people can't say that. You know, that's an enjoyment and a and, and a peace of mind that can't nobody take from us. That's I concur. Yeah. Go ahead, Ty Schmidt. Shaq, we saw you on Good Morning Football, and you obviously have you know an Emmy. Is there any consideration of you maybe trying to like get into the media world, uh, or is it the motivation motivational speaking? Like, does that kind of chew up most of your time, and it's something where you you don't know if you'd really be able to do both at the same time? I mean, honestly, there's no limit. I feel like it's a it's a start for everything, and I feel like motivational speaking is where I'm starting at now. But the media is going to come with it. We have a movie and stuff coming out. Whoa! 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 He's in the works, man. It, it, it's growing fast, and it's, and it's coming along even greater. I mean, it's, it's a blessing. Like I said, you know, I've been, been blessed and fortunate to be in a position where I can be able to showcase stuff that we've done and be able to show the world more and be able to be that face. Got it, AJ. What about this movie? I want to hear more about it. So it's, it's in the works. Are you going to play yourself? I, I sure hope you don't let anyone else play that role. Is this Eminem, 8 Mile? It's, it's, it's coming, coming together very well. It's, we've been working on it, um, working through the script and everything. I don't know if I'm going to be playing my part yet, but it's already, it already been signed that I made. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll, i got some good acting skills. Up Who would you go. want to play it there you if go. you don't? There's an arsenal. Oh, okay. All right. Are you, are you real quick... You at least have to get in there and like get beat up by you or something, you know. Like yeah. we were talking to Jack Carr yesterday. He's the guy who wrote the Terminalist, and uh, he gets killed by Chris Pratt. Yeah. And, and I don't think anybody should die in your movie. I don't know what you guys are doing. It might be a thriller. I'm not. I'm not we're talking about me and my brother. You know, we have a few arguments and a few tussles. So maybe I could throw in a part where it's like a little action part where you know I slam my brother off the top of a uh, off a couch into a table or something. Oh, yeah. You know, they better add that in. Yes! Yes, please. How, how much please. brainstorming can we do for this table or something? Because he took my socks. You never know. We might just add that in the movie. <laughs> Look at you. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, that, that is the time to do it. Uh, last question here for you, Shaq. We can't thank you enough on this big day in your life. Go ahead, Tone. Shaq, obviously you've mentioned him a few times now, but can you imagine the Super Bowl champions getting Bobby Wagner? Like, what is – what? like, they got an all-time, like, 10-time All-Pro, Pro Bowl, or, like – what does Bobby Wagner mean to you and probably the Rams now? Man, Bobby Wagner is uh, it, it's it's so crazy because when it comes to Bobby, it's it's more than just the physical attributes that he brings to a team. I feel like the mindset that he brings and the ability when it comes to being uh, a, a disciplined player, it it taught me something. So I can imagine what it can do, especially being in a place where he came from, like you know, being born and raised in L.A. and being able to be back home. It brings a different attribute to you when it comes to that. You know, when you feel at home. You know, when you're given that Bobby experience, the whole L.A. team is going to experience that and it's going to elevate their team. I feel like when I was when I was able to talk to Bobby after he made it, I was so proud of him just to see it. I was happy for him because I know that he's going home, so it's going to bring a new Bobby out for them. So hey, you lifted, you lifted the level of this entire show immediately upon arrival. I can't wait to see what you do next. Congrats oh, yeah. on an incredible football life. You're the absolute man. I know retirement isn't easy, but I think you're going to crush it. Congrats, man. Enjoy life. Appreciate you guys for having me today. Thank you. Hell yeah. Shaquem Griffin. Yes! Oh, yeah! Woo! So I couldn't hear him. No. No. But what he was saying was so good. It was. You know Why? Because I mean? it was, uh, I could tell, I knew you were, it was so, well, the phone was down, right? 
Or it, I was. Uh, I don't know. Just honestly, a little. Heard a tiny bit muffled. There yeah. was times though when it came through and mm-hmm. I'd hear it. So we heard a little bit of it. But he's so awesome and positive. It's hard to be like, hey, what? Can you turn your your yeah. phone there? He's awesome. Though. Yeah. He was on Good Morning Football. I did not see him. Yeah, this morning he was. How was it? Was it great? Yeah. yeah. Should he get on the show? He'll maybe? be out there. He was, yeah, uh, he was in Stu, right? He was in Stu. Uh, I don't know if it was like a, an audition type thing, though. I think it. Was, I think he announced his retirement maybe on Good Morning Football.